This is my 2011 giant STP-1 that I have upgraded and swapped out all the parts to what you'd want to see on a modern dirt jumper today if you were shopping for one because despite being a 13 year old frame giant in their infinite wisdom made sure to future proof this thing for people like me today. I thought it'd be fun to look at it and just kind of nerd out about it a little bit. Now, I don't want to give Giant too much credit here. It just goes straight to their heads. And to be fair, dirt jumpers really haven't changed or evolved that much in the last 15 years or so. But there are two main things that they changed from the prior generation of STP model frame to this one that make it much more modern compatible. New metal, eh, the very obvious tapered head tube. So it comes equipped with a tapered fork. And you know, when you look up the specs of the headset on this and you order it, you're gonna be able to get the one that fits. But as far as I understand from the research that I've done, the previous generation actually uses, uh, like it's a straight steer, but it's a 44 millimeter straight steer. So it's a lot like my uh, slope Duro bike here. You can put in the larger lower external bearing cup and run a tapered fork anyway. So I've seen some like early generation STPs with tapered forks in them and they do look cool. The second thing that really solidifies its place as a great dirt jumper is the redesign of the dropouts. These are an adjustable horizontal dropout and they have a built-in derailleur hanger. The STPs originally come with drivetrains, but this makes it a lot easier to swap over, do a single speed conversion. Then you don't have to run a tensioner or anything like that. You just spin, you just spin these, which are the tensioner that push the axle back in this movable dropout. It's something you actually see on the Canyon Stitched 360 today, I think. I think it might be on the new pivot, but, but this integrated system is something you see on bikes today, 13 years later. It's pretty cool. And this is definitely a one up over the previous generation STP. Those used vertical dropouts and you had to use a tensioner, which doesn't look cool and they're you know, not that great at keeping things quiet. Now, these next two things about this frame have nothing to do with it being future-proof, but we're nerding out here. I think they're cool, so I'm gonna show them to you. First up, the top tube. The top tube on this thing is this crazy hydroformed shape all the way from the head tube. It's got these weird notches up near the head tube drawn all the way back to like a Y shape at the end. And in that Y shape, the seat tube pierces through and is welded top and bottom. And then to make all of that match, the seat stays are drawn out to match the line completely and are welded in the middle and it creates this big space here. This seems to me like an absurd amount of work to get this look, but I'm talking about it in a YouTube video 13 years after the fact, maybe it was worth it, I guess. And then lastly, because I just think it actually helps with the strength of the frame, the chainstay yoke that goes up to the bottom bracket, it's very, very beefy looking, and I'm glad that it exists because uh, I tend, well, personally, I tend to break bikes around there because I'm always landing sideways or doing bad three to fakies. So very strong area and I'm glad it exists. My only qualm about this thing is that the welds at the dropouts are just like really not pretty. Like I would have expected, I guess I just expect better, but 
you know, they're not breaking. Okay, now that you've been informed of all of the quirks and features of the 2011 Giant STP-1, we can go over uh, how I built mine up for uh, 2023, 2024. So originally this thing came with a Lowers color matched Marizoki bomber that, uh, well, it didn't hold air. It also weighed a ton. So I still have it. It's just raining outside and I don't wanna go get it to, to show it to you. So you just have to imagine it. Now on this thing is uh, a RockShox Pike DJ. The all black looks absolutely killer, I think. I thought about getting a modern Marizoki bomber DJ, but uh, Devin has had issues with his. And my friend Dan had to warranty his Marizoki bomber Z2 trail forks twice due to the steer tube and uh, like fork crown issue. Like a lot of noise, a lot of loosening up. I'm just a little bit afraid of Marizaki forks because of that. Yeah, it freaks me out a little bit. This has been great. And because this frame comes with a tapered head tube, it's literally a direct swap. You pull the old fork out, put the bearing on this fork, cut it to length and it goes in. I'm running a DMR Defy 35 stem. I'm pretty sure it has if it doesn't have the exact same, it's very, very similar geometry to the stock stem that comes on this bike, but my God, it's way prettier. And as much as I know some people hate to hear it, you should like the way your bike looks. It does matter. I'm actually still running the stock bar, but it's cut down to 720 millimeters. I do want to try, I kind of want to try to go something with just maybe a little bit more rise, um, but I don't need to do that anytime soon. These have been, these are fine. I like, I like them a little narrower. I basically cut them down to this width to try and match between my BMX and this. So when I jump from one bike to the other, they feel uh, at least kind of similar. Nice to have some consistency. And then these are like the extra long ODI long necks. The rear brake works very poorly. It is a TRP slate lever with a now kinked hose and a Shimano, I think it's a MT200 caliper. They don't work good. It's like, it works really bad. That's kind of the next thing that I really should, should get. And then because I bar spin to the right, like I throw with my right hand and spin around clockwise. Um, I don't like the angle that when you wrap the hose around the steer tube comes out. So I've got, got a zip tie on my bar and a zip tie here pulling the cable so that it doesn't come back at a really extreme angle. Um, that's likely to be a pretty niche piece of information, but it is a piece of information nonetheless. The C post is the stock 30.9 giant pivotal post with the best saddle on the market, the Billy Perry saddle by Merit. Drive train wise, I actually forget what brand these cranks are. They say, Trans, I think it's called Mission. I think they're Mission Transits. They're like, when I was building the GTMX, they were the cheapest crank that I could find. And they came in like a, a relatively short length. These are 160 millimeters, 25 tooth We The People sprocket, and some of the best damn pedals that I have ever used. Theory plastic pedals with metal pins. These are like 45 bucks and they're the best. I would happily run these on all of my bikes with flat pedals. And because these are a BMX crank in a mountain bike frame, I'm using an Odyssey BMX European style thread in bottom bracket. That makes this work. And that leaves us with the last thing that I probably put the most amount of thought into before doing the wheels. So the stock wheels obviously come with provisions for a brake rotor in the front. So narrowing the flange width there. And because this thing comes stock with gears and a derailleur, it's got a hub with a free hub body. Also narrowing the flange width of the hub. I knew I was likely not ever gonna be running gears unless it was for some sort of experiment, but I was definitely never gonna be running a front brake. So Matt Jones was always talking about the Halo Wide Boy hub on his channel. It's a wider flanged hub body because there's nothing there for a front brake rotor to go. It's basically a BMX hub with a through axle. And I thought, I love that idea. Wider spoke brace angle, that's a tougher wheel. So I ordered one of those hubs and built it up to the stock Alienation Black Sheep rim because Alienation rims, well, those are like a, they're a BMX rim. They look like a BMX rim. 
and I was happy to kind of like keep as much BMX roots in this dirt jumper build that I could. And then I kind of did the same thing for the rear and just looked for a single speed cassette hub style rear hub. That way there's no free hub body taking up any sort of hub flange width. So the hub could be as wide as possible. Also making for as wide of a spoke brace angle for the wheel build that I do. So that it is stronger and that it can deal with all of the neglect and tough riding that I'll put this through. And because I'm always broke, what I came up with was the Octane One rear cassette hub from Chain Reaction before they stopped shipping internationally. So Octane One cassette mountain bike hub laced to an alienation black sheep rim in the rear, Halo wide boy hub laced to an alienation black sheep rim in the front. And they've been great. Wow, 11 minutes of this, I am so sorry. Anyway, uh, stickers are in, I've started shipping them out. You'll get an email soon that yours are on the way. If you want some, there's more.